Hai, kita jumpa lagi dalam new series. Episod kali ini, kita akan masuk the first chapter untuk the second semester punya content which is Ration Kinetics. Nak tahu lebih lanjut? Stay tuned. Hai, Assalamualaikum. Welcome back to the channel. As I mentioned earlier, episod kali ini merupakan the first episod untuk the first chapter for the second semester. Okay, so dalam episod kali ini kita akan masuk chapter baru which is iaitu kita akan discuss mengenai reaction kinetics. Dalam reaction kinetics ni kita ada tiga subtopik. The first one is reaction rate. The second one is collision theory and also theory, transition state theory. And finally dalam 8.3 kita akan discuss mengenai factors affecting reaction rate. Topik ni actually taklah susah sangat sebab dia adalah macam pengulangan dari apa yang diajar waktu form 5 dulu. Okay, so apa yang diajar dekat sini kita akan discuss dengan lebih mendalam. Ada beberapa benda-benda baru yang akan anda belajar di sini. Okay, our aim for this video is very simple. In this video, apa kita akan buat adalah by the end of this video, saya nak awak boleh define apa itu reaction rate. Awak boleh tulis apa itu reaction differential rate equation and also you can determine reaction rate based on differential rate equation. Okay, kita akan buat satu demi satu. Don't worry, kita, macam biasa kita akan go slowly for this one. Okay, the first one, reaction rate. Reaction rate tu apa? Reaction rate can be defined as the change in concentration of a reactant or product over time. Bermaksud kita akan tengok perubahan concentration tu, it can be for the reactant ataupun product. Okay, reactant biasanya akan berkurang, produk akan bertambah. Ini kita akan ukur dalam satu tempoh masa over time. What you have to know is the unit for reaction rate can be molar per minute atau molar per second. Actually, unit untuk time ni it can be anything. It can be molar per hour. Okay, it can be anything. Sebab perubahan tu dia ada benda yang akan decay dalam masa yang cepat, ada benda yang akan decay dalam masa yang lambat. One thing yang kita nak highlight kat sini adalah bahawa reaction rate ni, reaction rate ni is actually dia inversely proportional to time. Bermaksud kalau lagi cepat reaction tu berlaku, lebih tinggilah rate of reaction tu. Okey, kadar tindak balas tu lebih tinggi. Okey. So reaction rate ni apa yang awak perlu tahu adalah kita boleh plot dia dalam graf perubahan concentration versus time. Okey, dan kita ada beberapa jenis rate. Okey, there are average rate instantaneous rate and also initial rate. So right now, apa kita nak buat adalah kita akan tengok plot of concentration versus time. So ini adalah satu decomposition of compound X versus time. Okay, kita nampak bahawa over time, concentration dia berubah. Okay, makin lama makin berkurang. Starting from 1 molar, tinggallah 0.2 molar, something like that. Okay, so what you have to know here is kita nak tahu macam mana daripada plot ni kita boleh determine the first one which is average rate. Apa itu average rate? Average rate is defined as the rate over a period of time. Okay, maksudnya dalam satu tempoh masa tu berapa rate of reaction dia. This can be done kalau kita nak cari dia dengan cara kita kira gradient daripada tempoh masa tu lah. So in this case, saya nak tengok over a period of time yang berlaku sepanjang reaction ni. From T equal to zero to T equal to 360. Okay, apa yang saya akan buat adalah saya akan lukis satu line daripada 0 sampai 360 And from there, I will calculate the gradient of this line. Okay, the gradient of the line is equal to the average rate. Okay, kecerunan line tu adalah dia punya average rate. Okay, itu adalah average rate. Now, kita nak tengok instantaneous rate. Instantaneous rate is defined as the rate at specific time. Bermaksud, kalau kita contoh kita tengok apa rate of reaction pada masa bersamaan dengan let's say 120 second. Okay, so what we have to do is kita akan lukis tangent. Tangent adalah satu garisan yang menyentuhi satu titik dalam satu lekuk. Okay, so if you have a curve, okay, and a line touching at one point, nak tak bersentuh pula eh. Okay, so satu line tu disentuh pada satu point at this point, that is known as tangent. So in this case, kalau saya nak cari pada T is equal to 120, saya lukis tangent and daripada situ saya cari dia punya kecerunan, gradient of this graph. Okay, so gradient of the line will represent the instantaneous rate at T is equal to 120. So kita boleh buat 
pada mana-mana point dalam graph tu. And one more thing is initial rate. Initial rate is defined as the rate at the beginning of the reaction. Bermaksud rate pada permulaan reaction tu. So how do we do this? It is just the same as the, the instantaneous rate di mana kita akan lukis tangent pada t is equal to zero. Kita buat satu line tangent and kecerunan dia adalah bersamaan dengan rate pada t sama dengan kosong. Rate at t is equal to zero is known as initial rate. Now, what I want to do is I want to introduce you to one new thing. Okay, benda ni benda baru sikit yang diajar dekat Prentrick. Nama dia adalah differential rate equation. What is differential rate equation? Differential rate equation ni adalah satu equation yang akan tunjuk relationship between the rate of disappearance of the reactant and the rate of formation of the product. So daripada differential rate equation ni kita boleh tengok how fast and how slow the reaction proceed. Okay? So consider this rate general reaction. AA plus BB jadi CC plus DD. So kita boleh tulis sebab ini adalah perubahan the change of concentration the change of something dalam matematik akan di represented by the differential equation okay dy dx dy dx adalah perubahan so ini kita nak discuss adalah perubahan concentration over perubahan time okay so ini yang kita akan represent di sini so this one can be represented by using this expression okay negative 1 over a negative 2 adalah the sign untuk indicate bahawa reactant akan berkurang manakala A ini adalah stoichiometric coefficient B ini pun adalah stoichiometric coefficient C pun adalah stoichiometric coefficient D pun adalah stoichiometric coefficient notice one thing bila you nak tulis differential rate equation mesti letak perkataan rate di depan common mistake yang students selalu buat dalam exam adalah dia tertinggal perkataan rate Bila tertinggal perkataan rate di depan, jawapan anda akan salah. Okay, now, apa kita akan buat, kita tengok satu example. We were given this reaction for the formation of ammonia. Okay, daripada sini kita boleh tulis dia punya differential rate equation. The differential rate equation will look something like this. Negative rate is equal to negative dn2 over dt equal to negative 1 over 3 dh2 over dt and equal to 1 over 2 dnh3 over dt. Daripada sini kita boleh buat satu conclusion bahawa the rate of disappearance of nitrogen gas is equal to one third of the rate of disappearance of hydrogen gas and equal to the half of the rate of formation of ammonia gas. Ini sangat penting kenapa daripada sini kita boleh guna this information to determine the rate of formation of the product or the rate of disappearance of a reactant. So, nak lebih clear, jom kita tengok beberapa example. Example 1. Determine the rate of disappearance of HI when the rate of formation of I2 is 1.8 exponent negative 6 molar per second. We were given the equation equal to 2HI producing H2 plus I2. So, how do we do this? It is very simple. The first thing that you have to do is you have to write the differential rate equation. So rate is equal to negative 1 over 2 d h i over dt which is equal to positive 1 over 1 which is d h2 over dt which is equal to d i2 over dt. Okay, paling penting boleh tulis this expression first. Once you dah buat benda ni, kita diberi banyak maklumat bahawa the rate of formation bermaksud d i2 over dt is actually equal to 1.8 exponent negative 6 molar per second. We were asked to determine the rate of disappearance negative d h i over dt is equal to berapa? Ini soalan dia. So, what should we do is kita cari hubungan dia ni. Kita tahu bahawa okay, negative 1 over 2 dhi over dt is actually equal to d 
di I2 over dt and kita nak cari negatif di HI over dt so kita pindahkan 1 per 2 ke sebelah kita akan dapat dia sama dengan 2 darab di I2 over dt which is equal to 2 darab 1.8 exponent negative 6 molar per second so this is equal to 3.6 times 10 to the power of negative 6 molar per second so this is how we solve this question jom kita tengok another example the second example we were given a reaction between zinc and amount, uh, silver nitrate to produce zinc nitrate and silver so this is a displacement reaction to list the equation there zac n plus ag no3 dia akan jadi zac n no3 2 plus ag so ini 2 so ini adalah 2 so ini pun kena darab 2 so when the concentration of zac n2 plus zac n2 plus refer kepada zinc nitrate okay so dia adalah zac n2 plus Okay. is increasing at the rate of 0.25 molar per second what is the rate of decrease of ag plus so ag plus is actually referred by the silver nitrate so when you want when you want to do this to list the expression there rate is equal to negative d zac n over dt equal to negative 1 over 2 d ag plus over dt which is equal to d zn 2 plus over dt which is equal to 1 over 2 d ag over dt Okay, so kita nak tengok pasal AG plus dan juga ni dua saja. So kita boleh tulis balik. So D AG plus over DT ni yang kita nak cari negative 1 over 2 is equal to D ZN2 plus over DT. So negative d ag plus remember ya that bila soalan cakap rate of decrease ataupun rate of disappearance dia nak cari benda tu saja tanpa ada darab dengan stoichiometry okay this is equal to darab dengan 2 okay so it is 0.25 molar per second which is equal to 0.50 molar per second so this is how you should solve this question okay so i have prepared one more example here but I think I will let you to, do, to try it on your own okay so once you try nanti di hujung video nanti saya akan reveal the answer for this question so dalam video kali ni kita dah tengok beberapa benda yang pertama you have to know how to define rate and kita belajar different type of rate kita ada average rate instantaneous rate and also initial rate dan yang paling penting dalam video kali ni adalah kita belajar pasal differential rate equation and macam mana cara kita nak cari differential rate equation dan juga reaction rate untuk certain species ok remember how to write it ok kebanyakan students selalu buat mistake lupa perkataan rate to the depan ok uh, by the way ini adalah jawapan untuk soalan tadi remember untuk berjaya dalam hidup memerlukan banyak pengorbanan tetapi pengorbanan yang paling susah sekali adalah pengorbanan untuk memulakan langkah yang pertama. Kenapa? Kerana bila nak mula langkah pertama tu, kita kena tinggalkan sifat-sifat negatif, kita akan mula proses sifat-sifat positif dalam diri kita. With that, thank you for watching this video. See you next time. Assalamualaikum. Bye.